We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Dear ladies and gentlemen, and welcome uh, to the open forum organized by the European Commission and entitled Access to the Open Internet, Benefits, Challenges and Policy Approaches. My name is Teresa Horeisova from Diplo and the Geneva Internet Platform, and it is my big pleasure to be able uh, to moderate uh, these 60 minutes um, of our uh, exchanges uh, and discussions. Now, before I start, uh, let me just share with you a few points uh, on the kind of modus operandi uh, of, this, uh, of this session. Uh, so, first of all, I'm not the only moderator here. I am having with me uh, Mrs. Uh, Laura Ferre San Juan, who is our online moderator. She will be monitoring the chat, which I really encourage you to use uh, to think of any questions uh, that you would like uh, to ask, as well as just contribute with some comments. And we will make sure that Laura then uh, summarizes it uh, for us. I would like to encourage both our online audience to use uh, the chat as well as our participants in Katowice, because as you know, this is a hybrid meeting. And uh, in order to kind of get the biggest benefit of the session, it's great if we are all on the same platform. Now, uh, one great thing about this session also is that uh, we have interpretation, English and French. So feel free to use any channel that is kind of closer uh, to you. You can do that by clicking on the interpretation button at the bottom uh, of, your, uh, of your screens. So uh, let us dive uh, right in. Uh, as we have experienced also in uh, many of the sessions that have already taken place uh, at this Internet uh, Governance Forum, it is kind of uh, clear that to bridge the digital divide, access to the Internet is absolutely key. Yet, uh, it is not the case uh, for uh, all uh, of the countries. If I, uh, if I just uh, show you uh, probably statistics that you're uh, quite familiar with, uh, according to the uh, ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, now 63% uh, of the world's population have, uh, are using the internet as of 2021. This represents uh, an increase of 17% since 2019. So clearly, as you can see, there is the trend uh, is quite promising. However, this still leaves 2.9 billion people online, uh, which is not something uh, that, um, uh, that should leave us uh, kind of unconcerned. So uh, where we need to see some kind of connections is also that open internet uh, is a key driver for innovation, uh, for a social, a social, political, economic, uh, and cultural development uh, as well. So it is not just about getting online, but what uh, this can spill over uh, as, as the sec in the second place. And to kick, off, uh, kick us off, apologies, uh, for this discussion, we have excellent speakers with us, and we will hear from them and also the perspectives of the regions that they are coming from. So just to briefly tell you who has agreed to join us. We have, first of all, Mr. Yoichi Ida, who is the Deputy Director General for G7 and G20 Relations uh, at the Global Strategy Bureau at the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, uh, Japan, joining us remotely. Very good to have you with us, Mr. Ida. We have Mrs. Hadja Amayel Kane, Director uh, Network Technology Strategy at the Sonatel Group. Thank you uh, for joining us as well. Thanks a lot. Nice to be with you. Happy to be with you. Thank you, Hadia. Uh, we have with us also Mrs. Raquel Gatto, who is a, a consultant for the IGF Secretariat uh, in the Policy Network uh, on Meaningful Access. She facilitates this network. Good to see you, Raquel, and good to have joining you from Poland. Thank you very much, Teresa. I'm glad to be here uh, with participants on site and online. Excellent. And uh, I cannot, of course, not uh, mention a very important speaker who is also behind uh, trying uh, to put this session together from the European uh, Commission, head of sector at the Internet Governance and Multi-Stakeholder uh, Dialogue. Good to have you with us, Esteve. 
Thank you very much. It's, it's a real pleasure, and thank you very much to indeed to all the, to all the speakers and to you, Teresa, for accepting uh, moderating the session. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you also to you, Esteve, and also for the leadership of the European Commission in this respect. Now, uh, Mr. Ida, uh, if I may, uh, I would start uh, with you uh, and ask you about the vision of Japan uh, on the open internet, as well as some of the connectivity projects uh, that Japan is um, uh, supporting in developing countries uh, such as Africa. Over to you, Mr. Ida. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Teresa, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, it is my great pleasure to join uh, all of you uh, today uh, as uh, a speaker. And uh, as uh, uh, introduced with a very interesting uh, uh, statistics uh, in the beginning, uh, the uh, internet uh, has been the foundation of uh, economic growth and uh, 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 many uh, uh, variety of uh, uh, activities, social activities for the people in, uh, around the world. Uh, but at the same time, uh, 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 it used to be more than half of the population, world population, uh, hadn't been uh, uh, connected uh, to the internet. But uh, uh, luckily, we have uh, uh, two thirds uh, are now uh, uh, having access, uh, but still one third uh, uh, is not given the access. And uh, uh, this is a, a very uh, important uh, 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 challenge uh, for us, uh, even for us uh, who are already connected, because uh, the uh, connect, uh, connectivity uh, gives uh, the uh, enormous uh, uh, benefit uh, to uh, uh, all the people uh, uh, around the world, because uh, when uh, we want to, to uh, uh, access to, to uh, people uh, uh, around the world, uh, we need uh, connectivity. And uh, it is uh, uh, always very difficult to find uh, uh, sustainable and meaningful access uh, to the uh, world uh, at uh, with the uh, most serious uh, difficulties. Uh, it is uh, always uh, uh, out of the market and it, uh, uh, for government, uh, it's always uh, uh, the most serious challenges. And uh, if uh, we, we uh, having uh, said this, uh, uh, we are, now uh, uh, making, uh, we have been making uh, 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 continuous uh, efforts uh, uh, with uh, uh, colleagues and uh, uh, pe people from the, uh, uh, the like-minded uh, partners. Uh, to provide uh, meaningful and uh, affordable access uh, to the people, especially in the uh, disadvantaged uh, regions, uh, including Africa. So the, uh, our government uh, uh, is now working with ITU and some other uh, uh, countries uh, to provide uh, access uh, to uh, the people in Africa. Uh, uh, through a uh, uh, project called uh, Recover, uh, Connect to Recover. Uh, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, brought us to the recognition uh, that uh, internet connectivity is a foundation for, uh, not only for the uh, economic uh, activities, but also for the uh, ordinary life and uh, 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 some uh, very uh, basic uh, uh, activities such as uh, education or healthcare or uh, uh, transport, and uh, uh, in order to to maintain a very basic uh, uh, elements uh, of daily life and also to, to provide uh, uh, 
some uh, uh, economic activities uh, needed for recovery from the pandemic, uh, we definitely need uh, uh, connectivity. And uh, uh, we are now uh, working uh, with ITU and other countries uh, to provide uh, 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 the uh, better access and uh, connectivity to the people in Africa. And uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, we started some project uh, in uh, Rwanda and other uh, uh, countries uh, through the project. Uh, we also uh, you, uh, uh, promote some project uh, by using uh, official development assistance uh, programs uh, uh, by the government. And uh, we are, are trying to, to uh, uh, increase the connectivity uh, by uh, submarine cables and other uh, uh, innovative uh, solutions. Uh, uh, one of the uh, example is uh, uh, a platform called uh, uh, HAPS, uh, High Altitude Platform uh, uh, Architecture, uh, which uh, uses um, um, uh, drone technology uh, to provide uh, uh, platform uh, uh, at uh, some 20 kilometers uh, altitude uh, to provide uh, uh, wireless uh, access from the air uh, to a wide range uh, of uh, region uh, to uh, 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 and uh, provide some broadband uh, wireless access uh, to the people uh, in disadvantaged regions. Uh, we are uh, doing uh, such efforts uh, in the uh, uh, disadvantaged uh, uh, regions, uh, including Africa, and we try to improve the connectivity, global connectivity uh, around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to you, uh, Mr. Ida. Kind of two keywords that I've um, taken from your contribution uh, when describing access were the adjectives of meaningful uh, and affordable. Uh, I cannot stress enough uh, how important these two are. And um, your contribution also was a nice uh, segue uh, to actually um, turning to uh, Mrs. Kane, yes, because we've heard about the Japanese support also for some initiatives in the African region. Uh, now, um, what, according to you, uh, are some of the success and challenges, uh, uh, let us say, uh, to open internet uh, in Africa in particular? Uh, Mrs. Kane. Yes, thanks a lot. If you allow me, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, switch to French, uh, which is uh, one of my native languages. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just a, just a note for anybody who came late. We have interpretation, so you can use uh, English channel if that is better for you. Go ahead, Mrs. Kane. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay, okay. So I will uh, switch to French. Donc uh, merci, hein. merci à tous uh, pour l'opportunité qui m'est offerte de, de représenter uh, Sonatel, qui est uh, la, le, la, la société incumbent de télécom uh, au Sénégal. Alors, euh, au Sénégal, en Afrique, aujourd'hui, sur les tendances euh, marché de l'Internet ouvert, nous avons beaucoup euh, d'acteurs qui sont dans le marché. Essentiellement, nous avons les opérateurs, nous avons les MVNO, euh, nous avons aussi les fournisseurs euh, d'accès à Internet. Euh, donc, sur la branche Afrique, évidemment, euh, la partie mobile est beaucoup plus développée que l'Internet fixe broadband. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, les opérateurs qui sont venus tardivement ont beaucoup plus investi sur ces branches-là. Et dans le fixe, par contre, aujourd'hui, même si Sonatel est quasiment l'acteur, le seul acteur sur place hein, qui délivre des offres fixes et basées sur du cuivre ou de la fibre, aujourd'hui, le marché du fixe wireless access est quand même un peu... Euh, en retard euh, dans la sous-région. Donc, quels sont les besoins principaux d'après Sonatel pour assurer l'Internet ouvert Le premier défi et le défi principal, c'est d'assurer une connectivité à toutes les populations. Et donc, dans ce cadre-là, euh, tous les opérateurs hein, 
ont introduit une politique sur la partie euh, mobile broadband euh, de développement d'infrastructures basées sur la 3G, la 4G dans la sous-région et nous so faisons partie des moyennes hautes. Hein. Nous avons un profil similaire à celui en Europe puisque en général dans les pays en Afrique subsaharienne, euh, ils sont encore à à près près 20% de connectivité sur la 3G. Nous nous avons beaucoup de connexions en majorité qui sont hébergées sur la 4G. Donc aujourd'hui nous développons aussi dans la région un mix technologique dépendant de la zone et de son éloignement, si on est dans le rural, si on est dans l'urbain, pour avoir aussi accès à l'Internet fixe en nous basant soit sur des technologies filaires comme le cuivre, la fibre ou bien sur des technologies fixes wireless access. Malheureusement, le pouvoir d'achat étant ce qu'il est en Afrique, déployer la technologie n'est pas toujours rentable. C'est pour ça qu'aujourd'hui, un des principaux besoins que nous avons, c'est quand même d'emmener l'État et les collectivités locales à baisser un peu la pression fiscale qu'on a sur les opérateurs pour leur permettre de dégager plus de moyens pour investir sur ces infrastructures-là. Et également, il y a d'autres initiatives autour du partage d'infrastructures pour co-investir sur les nouvelles zones. Maintenant, s'agissant de la question aujourd'hui sur la coopération à l'international, j'ai noté hein, ce que le collègue japonais disait. On voit qu'il y a des initiatives sur le satellite et ce qu'il dit sur les plateformes qui peuvent donner euh, des connectivités depuis euh, l'air hein, euh, sont aussi appréciables parce que nous avons beaucoup de zones très reculées. Mais nous comptons en tout cas sur les standards, les organismes des standards qui vont asseoir aussi tout ce qui est euh, problématique de technologie et d'évolution à un coût qui permet d'optimiser les dépenses en énergie, qui permet d'optimiser et de, de pénétrer plus loin. Donc, toutes ces évolutions technologiques-là vont contribuer un peu à apporter la technologie aux populations. Voilà. Euh, merci à vous, Madame Kane. Thank you very much uh, for this contribution and for, uh, again, opening our eyes with the, with the very concrete, uh, you know, challenges and possible solutions, not only of the technological uh, nature uh, that can be done. Now, staying on the local uh, level and uh, going to you, uh, Mrs. Gato, Raquel, um, what are some of the relevant practices uh, that are implemented uh, by local actors? And here, you know, we can talk about local government, civil society, local providers and entrepreneurs as well uh, to ensure uh, that, uh, access, uh, that there is access to the open internet. Over to you, Raquel. Thank you very much, uh, Teresa. And uh, first of all, for the sake of meaningful participation, I'm the only speaker uh, on site, uh, but I do not feel alone. I have uh, lots of participants on site. Thank you very much for, for your attendance. I'm not sure you can see from, uh, from the Zoom uh, that we have uh, almost uh, uh, half of the room full here. So that's, uh, that's great. Um, and uh, so the, just to start uh, uh, with uh, also thanking uh, very much the, the organization uh, for this opportunity to showcase uh, the, this new intersessional track uh, within the IGF. We are trying to be innovative precisely to tackle those, um, uh, those major uh, policy problems, but also real uh, problems, uh, and one of them is meaningful access. Uh, so the Policy Network on Meaningful Access, PNMA, another acronym for our uh, environment, is um, was created and kick off uh, back in June this year. Uh, it is uh, comprised by a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, working group uh, of 25 um, uh, high level uh, experts uh, from different stakeholder groups. Uh, and one of the goals is precisely to bring uh, those key actors that are involved on achieving meaningful uh, access to the table and uh, to learn from those local experiences and from the broader community, what needs to be done and really do it. So um, I, I'm shortcutting uh, a lot of the discussions that we went over uh, more than six months now. Uh, and we just presented uh, for those that are familiar with the IGF, I'm in one of those marathon days. Uh, we just left uh, two main sessions. Uh, the main session that we presented the, the policy network uh, on meaningful um, access, but also uh, the main session about uh, how to achieve the multilingual internet. And I congratulate 
Kalish, also uh, Mrs. Kane for coming uh, uh, and speaking in, in, in French, uh, which is one of the aspects uh, so much highlighted today. But back to the, the PNMA. Um, so the group kick off uh, with the discussion precisely, what does meaningful access mean? Because in the local level and for each of us, uh, it does uh, mean different things. For some, access means uh, their only way to have education with the pandemics. It's been said over and over, but uh, with the pandemic, uh, we learned that um, this is a lifeline. For others, it's the only way to communicate with their families. And uh, for many others in risky areas or in, in conflict zones, uh, that's an emergency lifeline. So. Uh, we need to listen more. Uh, we need to learn from those experiences and collect them. Uh, and what the group started uh, seeking out with a call for inputs, and uh, we received uh, by now over 20 contributions, and uh, they are still coming. So I invite everyone watching to please uh, join and, and, and send if you have any contributions from your local level experience. Uh, but we are learning uh, that uh, there are some properties that we could uh, build on, uh, perhaps not uh, go over definition of meaningful access because there are good organizations that are already uh, that have already uh, worked on those as A4AI, ISOC, and many others. But to really bring this together, what are those key elements that we need can work, we need they work, uh, and where are the bottlenecks to make it happen? Uh, I think Ms. Ida, uh, Mr. Ida was also tackling on, on, on this challenge. And um, it's really, sometimes uh, it is a policy uh, aspect, uh, sometimes it is a funding um, barrier, uh, and sometimes it is uh, just a knowledge barrier of uh, what can be done because it's not replicated. So one of the efforts um, that the PNMA uh, is also uh, uh, tackling is uh, to have a next phase. So to continue this year was building the, the, the policy network itself, bringing those actors together, understanding uh, a little bit more and framing the, the, the challenges uh, and really come out with not only um, uh, another report on what others should be doing, but what we can do together. So this is also an innovative uh, way of approaching uh, the IGF community that we hope uh, we can uh, bring together and, and, and continue next year. Um, and those efforts combined not only within the IGF community, so the different components of, uh, of the IGF discussions, uh, of course, grounded um, in, 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 in the IGF mandate, but also on the efforts uh, from the, the, the United Nations uh, Secretary General, um, the, the, the roadmap on digital cooperation brings this very clearly, but also the, the more recent uh, Our Common Agenda uh, call. And so uh, bringing this all together, uh, it's very important so to look inside, but also to tap on the other fora. Um, and so that's what we are expecting in terms of um, achieving uh, more participation and, and learning from, uh, from you. So thank you very much, Teresa. And, and thanks to you, uh, Raquel, also for sharing uh, kind of uh, what it looks like uh, in the room in Katowice. We, we are really appreciated we, uh, that we have our on-site participants. Um, thank you also for uh, mentioning the work of the PNMA, Policy Network on Meaningful Access. We do like good acronyms uh, in these circles, <laughs> don't we? So that's one more uh, to add to our uh, collection. Now, uh, jokes aside, uh, let's talk uh, more serious stuff, of course, and that's some of the policy approaches. Um, Mr. Sands, we've heard from all of the speakers uh, before you about the local uh, specificities, specificities, about the local needs. Now, what can we answer in terms of policy? Yes, thank you so much indeed. Uh, we've heard very, very interesting uh, uh, presentations from the from the previous speakers, bringing to light the, the problems of the digital divide, um, which are fundamental. And we've heard a lot, and we hear a lot about the digital divide in the IGF. Uh, it's you know at this point in time, 
we should really find solutions as soon as possible. It's it's uh, almost uh, surrealistic that we haven't found a way of digitizing the the world at this point, taking into account how many things come come with that. At the same time, we also hear in 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 the IGF, and uh, it, it's part also of this uh, discussion around meaning, meaningful access that the Commission welcomes very much. This idea that we should to, to press pause and think about connectivity, perhaps in more complex terms. So what what we mean by connectivity, and what we mean by connectivity to the to the open internet, among other things, because we this ideal notion at the beginning of the internet that you would put internet into communities and societies and then you would empower citizens you would empower uh, companies local ecosystems almost immediately well we need to rethink it at least rethink it we need to pause and uh, think um, what's going on and and for sure not take it for for granted and this is certainly what underlies, I would say, the EU policy approach to digitization in our own uh, in our own uh, region, but also what underlies the uh, philosophy and policies that are proposed in very recent uh, communications and strategies by the Commission. One is the digital compass. Uh, but another one, which is particularly relevant for this context, is the global gateway. The Global Gateway is a new initiative that the president of the Commission, uh, von der Leyen, introduced last week. The Global week Gateway is a connectivity package that will mobilize uh, 300 billion euros in connectivity investments, all sorts of connectivities, but of course, digital connectivity has a very, very, uh, very clear role in partner countries. Uh, Global Gateway will build on on, on existing uh, European instruments and actions, and there are many of those, but it's a new instrument. It, we we have, have are really undertaking an exercise of rethinking our connectivity projects uh, around the world. It's an open, still open instrument, and that's why these conversations are very important for us because here we get we get ideas, we get perspectives uh, that will certainly shape how the global gateway will look like in the end. But there are three characteristics that I would like to mention to you because we have already announced them in the in the communication and the materials, and that will really underlie the global global gateway initiative, connectivity initiatives um, uh, that we will uh, that we will uh, put forward in 2022. The first one is that we really think that digital connectivity investments need to be intrinsically linked to the development of standards, protocols, and infrastructures that support the free, secure, and open internet. So that basically people can access the full range of services with a high quality experience on this open internet. We have the telecom infrastructure. We should really link those investments on the telecom infrastructure with developments of the open internet. We think this is extremely important in terms of, um, of uh, the quality of experience and the meaningful access that one can get to that connectivity, but also is a way of really uh, preventing that that connectivity might eventually get connected to alternative internets that really do not fit what we understand by an open and free internet. The second characteristic of the Global Gateway that I would like to mention is that these infrastructure invest investments will be combined with country level technical assistance on digital regulations. Digital regulations that will want to ensure that uh, the rights of privacy are protected, that data protection is really a core feature of connectivity markets, the development of local digital industries, societies, and cultures. This is not a given. We need a fair and open market vis-a-vis, -vis especially the big tech power on those markets. We need trustworthy artificial intelligence. We need cybersecurity. The European Union is very much engaged into these processes. We have been experimenting with those regulations and designing those regulations for a long time. Our infrastructure investments will come with assistance so that, again, the connectivity that is deployed truly empowers local ecosystems and people and uh, local businesses 
and, and does not create dependencies in that sense. The third characteristic of the global gateway will be that uh, it will proceed in, on the basis of equal partnerships and multi-stakeholder partnerships. We will engage not only very deeply with uh, countries and local industries, but also linking with existing international efforts in ITU, in the UN, in the World Bank, et cetera, et cetera, but also with EU industry members and a broad range of stakeholders. So we really think that connectivity projects should proceed in this multi-stakeholder multi -stakeholder way, but really start from, from the ground, really start understanding what are the connectivity needs of, uh, of, uh, of uh, partner countries and really partner with them to, to, to approach to that. So in, in some, the open internet, as we have said, is a major source of uh, prosperity, of innovation, of uh, um, cultural creativity, of uh, freedom of speech. Uh, and we, we should really, you know, at this point, find solutions to bring this connectivity once and for all to, to everyone. But we think that we need more ingredients. And uh, the three ingredients that I'm proposing you here and that are part of this Global Gateway Initiative is infrastructure, yes, but connected intrinsically to deployments of, uh, of the open internet so that the experience of the open internet is the right one and the correct one according to local needs. Um, digital regulations as a package, we want an internet that really empowers local ecosystems, local markets, uh, citizens, uh, etc. And through well-coordinated multi-stakeholder partnerships uh, to really confront the, the huge economic investment that this represents, but uh, also really link it to what are the real needs on the ground. Thank you. Oh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Sanz. Uh, also for this kind of frank assessment that this is a complex issue and that there is uh, no uh, silver, uh, silver bullet, uh, so to say. Now, uh, let us try to hear uh, from our audience about um, what um, are uh, the challenges. I hope you can see my screen now, but uh, what I would kindly like uh, you to do uh, is to go to www.menti.com and uh, put the code uh, of the session. You can use your mobile phone uh, or your uh, computer, of course. The code uh, for the session is 78388509. And give us kind of your assessment on what you think uh, are the greatest challenges to the uh, access uh, to the internet in your region. So uh, let us just, uh, you know, spend a few seconds collecting uh, the, uh, the inputs. And um, I would like to take this opportunity to actually turn to Laura, who has been monitoring a chat. I know that there has been a contribution. So uh, while uh, our uh, audience is submitting uh, their, uh, their opinion, uh, would you be able to share with us what has been going on in the chat, please? Hello, can you listen to me? All good. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. So by the moment, we have only have one comment in the chat, but it's a really valuable comment. So we are good on that side. We have had Steph, who is a researcher in, in cyber psychology, a very interesting field. And she was talking about how uh, cybersecurity topics and the cyber world is very broad and within it there are a diverse range of topics to explore. And she was saying that sometimes uh, cyber psychology is a topic that it's overlooked, that we don't pay enough attention. So she was raising the question on whether we should start ch changing the narrative on this, on this topic. Thank you very much, Laura, for that, uh, and also uh, also for this question. Uh, so before I uh, let our uh, dear panelists uh, to engage, uh, let us quickly summarize what the kind of mood in the room, virtual, in situ room is. So uh, most of you who have responded uh, think that the greatest challenge to the access to open internet in your region uh, is the lack of uh, policy will. 
followed by something else. And then others uh, appreciating uh, uh, the problem of uh, appropriate infrastructure and little awareness regarding its benefits. So that's just a little illustration. If those of you uh, who have answered um, uh, to uh, that, that it is something else uh, would like to share with us uh, what this is, uh, we would be uh, very pleased to hear from you. Feel free to use the chat or obviously just raise your hand. Yes, we do not need to uh, communicate only through the chat. Now, uh, turning to our uh, dear panelists now, uh, I would like you to address uh, both the question that Laura has just uh, shared with us on the kind of cyber psychology. Uh, and I would also like to give you an opportunity to react uh, uh, to what the preceding speakers uh, have covered, if there is anything particular uh, that you would like to elaborate on further. Uh, I'll go, uh, obviously, uh, first to Mr. Ida, uh, because uh, you were the first speaker. Uh, may I ask you for your reactions, please? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, having listened to the previous uh, speakers, uh, the uh, importance uh, of uh, uh, strengthening the infrastructure is, uh, uh, of course, uh, significant uh, now. But at the same time, uh, we cannot uh, forget uh, the importance of uh, uh, maintaining and even uh, strengthening the uh, democracy in the internet space uh, is very important and uh, something we need to address at this moment. Uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Sanz uh, uh, described, uh, the uh, priorities of, of the uh, project uh, Global uh, Gateway uh, must be how to to uh, maintain and promote uh, free uh, open and uh, uh, interconnected, interoperable uh, uh, internet around the world. And uh, if we look at uh, the uh, current situation over the world, uh, some uh, countries, we don't want to bring too much politics, but still we have to admit some countries are now uh, 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 going into uh, some uh, different direction, uh, which uh, the internet uh, has been uh, providing us uh, in, in the, over the last uh, decades. And uh, the core value of the internet uh, is uh, freedom and democracy uh, in, in, uh, to, all, uh, to, to all the people, uh, all the participants and uh, uh, the uh, importance of multi-stakeholder uh, uh, participation. So uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we have to, to uh, take actions all together uh, among uh, uh, the like-minded uh, partners uh, to protect uh, shared value, uh, which are the human uh, centeredness, uh, human uh, protection of human rights and the privacy, and the uh, uh, protection of uh, democratic values. And uh, uh, in order to do that, uh, we uh, uh, we uh, are not only uh, working uh, to increase uh, the uh, uh, connectivity and the infrastructure, but uh, we have to to uh, also take uh, actions uh, to. Uh, prevail uh, the uh, our uh, common values uh, through the uh, 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 the good uh, uh, reg uh, regulatory situations and uh, good uh, uh, policy uh, uh, shared by uh, all the stakeholders uh, on the uh, in the internet space and uh, uh, to do that uh, our government uh, would be very uh, very keen to work uh, together uh, with the partners from uh, uh, like-minded uh, world. Thank you very much. Thanks to you, uh, Mr. Ida. Uh, Madam Kane, uh, if I may turn to you now uh, for any quick reactions uh, on um, either the question in the chat or uh, our speakers, please. Oui, merci. Uh, je voulais réagir par rapport à ce que notre collègue là, qui expliquait un peu le plan sur la communauté européenne, ce qu'il a expliqué, uh, sur le fait que le plan, quelque part, est assujetti. 
a une euh, obligation hein, de respecter euh, les normes et les standards de, de l'Internet ouvert. Donc, par rapport à cela, euh, ce que je voulais dire, hein, je, je ne veux pas du tout euh, choquer l'assistance parce qu'en fait, là, on est sur une question d'Internet ouvert. C'est vraiment notre objectif à tous. Et euh, en Afrique également, nous avons des régulations qui sont assez strictes et qui nous obligent à nous conformer de manière à garantir l'intégrité de l'information et euh, à ne pas l'altérer et à la sécuriser. Maintenant, le premier problème vraiment que les populations ont, indépendamment de ce problème-là de l'Internet ouvert, euh, de fiable et sécurisé sur l'information, c'est qu'ils ont besoin, eux, de l'Internet comme formidable outil de digitalisation des usages. En fait, aujourd'hui, l'Internet, pour les populations en Afrique, c'est un moteur et un facteur de développement. Et donc, à ce titre-là, aujourd'hui, nous avons une espèce de, de marketplace hein, qui est euh, sur l'Internet et que nous utilisons euh, pour vraiment accéder à tous les services, à une distribution sans discrimination aucune. Et ça, c'est vraiment un levier pour pousser les, les populations à accéder aussi au développement parce qu'elles sont enclavées, elles n'ont pas les services sur place. Quand on voit tout ce qui est fait dans le secteur du mobile money, on voit bien que tous ces services-là sont amenés à l'utilisateur dans les zones enclavées où il est euh, parce qu'on a Internet. Donc, c'est aussi un, un facteur hein, d'accroissement de, 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 de tout ce qui est euh, compétition économique et autres. Donc, le premier problème en Afrique, vraiment, c'est de pouvoir avoir accès à ces investissements-là euh, uniquement pour une question d'accès d'abord, pas une question nécessairement euh, de forte intégrité, mais déjà, il y a des services sur lesquels on n'a pas ces problématiques-là d'intégrité et de, 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 de problèmes politiques, en tout cas d'altération de, de l'information. Ces services-là doivent être accessibles pour les Africains et nous avons besoin de cette contribution en investissement sans que ce ne soit conditionné nécessairement avec des, 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 des facteurs très difficiles pour arriver à respecter euh, cette question de l'Internet ouvert. Donc, notre cri du cœur hein, pour faciliter cet investissement-là, ce serait vraiment, comme on l'a dit, que l'État et les collectivités aident les opérateurs pour qu'on puisse donner aux populations le moyen d'accéder. Et nous avons donc besoin, les fonds que vous avez mis en place en Europe, c'est ce que nous avons besoin, nous aussi, en Afrique, pour pouvoir accompagner le développement des infrastructures. On a besoin que le régulateur mette un cadre légal pour le partage d'infrastructures, pour favoriser le co-investissement dans les infrastructures. Et un autre point clé, c'est la participation des OTT, des GAFA, à l'effort d'investissement. Aujourd'hui, en Afrique, il n'y a que les opérateurs qui investissent. Or, nous, nous fournissons un tuyau, mais le service, le contenu qui représente la richesse principale est fourni par les OTT. Et les OTT ne participent pas à cet effort d'investissement. Donc, nous avons besoin aussi que les organismes comme l'IGF, comme tous les standards, l'IUT, etc., les États, les gouvernements, aident aussi à construire un cadre qui va amener les OTT aussi à participer à cette offre d'infrastructures et aussi à déployer eux-mêmes leur centre de contenu, leur data center au plus près en Afrique pour nous éviter de faire des investissements très chers sur du câble sous-marin parce que contrairement à l'Europe, nous n'avons pas le contenu dans notre continent. Donc c'est un peu ce que je voulais dire. On a besoin de ce genre d'initiative comme ce qui est fait en Europe, mais localisé en Afrique. Et si les OTT peuvent participer à l'alimenter, ce sera très bien pour nous parce que les opérateurs sont très seuls dans ce, face à ce problème de l'investissement. Merci. Mm -hmm. Merci à vous, Madame Kane. Uh, thank you for uh, also sketching some, you know, possible uh, solutions uh, uh, to the uh, to the uh, problem at hand. Uh, Raquel, uh, an opportunity for you uh, to react um, uh, to uh, those speaking before you. Thank you very much, Theresa, again. And uh, I'm going to start reacting by, by our uh, comment online uh, uh, on the human aspect also of the discussions on meaningful access, because this was brought into the PNMA discussions. Um, I think Mr. Ridasan mentioned also that uh, very often those discussions are um, held into the infrastructure level, which is also important. We still need to connect a lot of people. Uh, almost one third of the population is not online uh, is still. 
uh, but it's not connecting uh, only the computers, it's connecting people, it's connecting humans. Uh, and the way we connect them is also important. So uh, some of the questions, uh, the, the key policy questions that are behind uh, the work of the PNMA is looking into meaningful access with uh, three pillars, um, the, the connectivity, which uh, also tackles on the infrastructure, but looks into models that empowers this connectivity also from a, a bottom up and from the community. And I'm going to go back to this because uh, I think that's the most concrete example uh, that we can take out from, from the IGF experience uh, as also Mr. Uh, Estev was mentioning. But um, uh, the, the, just for the sake of the order, <laughs> the three pillars that we are taking is connectivity, uh, digital inclusion, and a capacity development, precisely because it's not only about the infrastructure, but it's uh, how you are, you are going to get connected, what is the quality of your use, and what is the impact of this, uh, this use and this connectivity. So those are the underlining uh, questions that uh, we are also uh, working uh, uh, on the, the PNMA. But uh, back to the concrete example, and for the sake of time, um, one of the, the, the examples that the IHF has been very successful is in uh, promoting the community networks, and it's a dynamic coalition, it's another intersessional track, um, which is called the DC3. Um, uh, it's a connectivity community network that should know better, uh, another acronym, <laughs> but um, uh, it has uh, it started uh, back uh, five years ago, and uh, it started with sharing this experience uh, uh, from local uh, countries uh, closer to, to, to my region. I'm from Brazil, so Mexico uh, from Latin America. It started looking into uh, the indigenous community that were not connected um, in any uh, other form of communication. Um, and so looking over their regulation, uh, it was very hard to find ways uh, to bring this connectivity. There was no commercial interest. There was no... Um, uh, service that was provided uh, for those uh, those uh, communities, and so they decided to become uh, operators, uh, telecommunication operators, and so in a non-traditional way. And so this has sparkled a whole discussion that, of course, took uh, some time to to come together. Uh, but their experience ended up uh, creating a new uh, policy model uh, of licensing for uh, for non-traditional. Uh, operators, uh, which is uh, often called the, the, the community networks. And this is not the only example. I mean, there is no uh, one single solution. But by uh, being able to share this experience and how they came through the solutions, um, it has really been uh, contagious in, in, in the region. So um, back in, the, in, in this uh, five years, uh, straightforward now, uh, Brazil has already started reviewing and, and, and uh, adapting some of its regulations. Argentina has done uh, also uh, Colombia. And so uh, we can see how bringing to light or bringing this knowledge and, and, and sharing in, in those spaces, not only uh, the IGF, but other fora, uh, was crucial to um, inspire other countries to look uh, when they have this, uh, this issue. And uh, just uh, on the human factor also, uh, that is so important because community networks uh, do not, does not mean only bringing those, uh, uh, bringing the connection, right? Bringing the access, bringing the uh, the fiber or the, the 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 radio station or whatever kind of uh, connectivity you are looking for, uh, but it's really bringing the uh, the community to appropriate uh, from this because you can get them connected, but if they don't understand the benefits, if they don't understand um, uh, what they are using and and don't appropriate uh, from uh, the, the from keeping up with uh, with this connection, uh, it's not really going to be meaningful. So that's one of the examples that surfaces over and over. It's not only uh, an example from Latin America, Africa has uh, lots of them, uh, and even in, in uh, developed countries uh, in, in the US, we have examples and so on and so forth. But I just wanted to uh, try to, to uh, 
uh, wrap it up with uh, uh, the, the, the comment that was made uh, on the importance of um, not only putting the connection, but making a, a way that the community owns this connection and owns its uh, uh, decisions about how they want to be connected and what they are going to get after they are connected. Thank you very much. Very relevant uh, points from you, Raquel, indeed. And I'm very glad that you brought the capacity uh, development dimension in. Uh, that indeed is important. Uh, Mr. Esteve, uh, over to you uh, for any quick reactions. Well, I will be very, very quick because I go last. And, uh, but uh, it's really, I, could, I couldn't agree more with everything that, uh, that the, the speaker said. I think that. Um, you know, in the end, it all converged to this idea of empowering local communities. It, it's really um, finding the right ingredients, the, the skills, but the infrastructures, the technologies, etc., that really contribute to the development of local ecosystems, of, of really um, letting people shape the technology in a way that it's meaningful to them, that it's meaningful economically to, to one given country, and that contributes to self-reliance at the end which was the initial promise of the internet. It was a bottom-up promise of self-reliance. And I, but I think that this needs work. It's not a given. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of thinking. It needs a lot of understanding of those, uh, those local needs, those local cultures. And it needs uh, work because we have forces that go against that. And now we see them. And uh, Mr. Uh, Ida was very clear in, uh, in mentioning certain states. Uh, we fully agree with that. Uh, also, there are many big companies that uh, have very big power on, online and uh, they might not contribute as, as, as we thought at the beginning to, to the development of, uh, of local markets. And uh, that's why we're you know, thinking and, and evolving into these extremely democratic regulations around, around, around the internet. And, and uh, that's, that's, really, that's really, I think, one, one common trend that uh, we should really work, not take it for granted, but work so that that empower, um, local empowerment happens. And we should not underestimate the role of infrastructure here. It's not, it's not, uh, there, it's not uh, that simple. Infrastructure, it looks very technical. It looks like pipes. It looks like standards. It looks like protocols. But it, it, it is involved in all this. It is profoundly involved. And we should really take note of that and work on that. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Esteve, and you know certainly for also collecting the inputs. Uh, we are hoping that this session uh, will be a, a contribution as well. So feel free uh, to use the channels we have available uh, to really uh, to really contribute. Now, um, opening up a little bit more sensitive topic, and that is um, kind of there is a little bit of a shift as we uh, as we can feel from the initial aspirational vision of the internet uh, to and Mr. Ida kind of referred to it, uh, to endeavors of some countries uh, to introduce, let's say, more state-controlled uh, models uh, of connectivity. As we start to be a little bit pressed for time, I would like to ask our panelists for quick reactions, uh, very tweet-like manner. And I'll actually start with you, Esther. Thank you. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I think that it's uh, the agnostic is very clear, uh, at least Mr. Uh, Ida and myself uh, and the European Union in general, I think that share it uh, very profoundly. Um, but I just maybe to, just to say that we feel that we are entering even a new phase of this sort of uh, debate that goes into the technical infrastructure itself. And this, this, is wor this worries us a lot uh, because basically we see uh, proponents uh, of uh, standards in, in, in standardization organizations that would basically create uh, a new stack of TCP IP protocols uh, that according to their own description of, of those protocols, it, it would create an alternative top-down internet that uh, basically it's uh, uh, completely different than the open and free internet that we that we that we understand. And this is something that worries us that goes deeper into what we're generally used to that it's not going to happen tomorrow because it's a very almost megalomaniac, I would say, project, but nonetheless, it exists. Uh, and it, it would be very damaging for the, for, the, for the free global open internet because it would basically fragment the internet uh, very significantly. 
and, and this is something that, uh, that we will also be working on. Thank you, Esteban. Uh, Raquel. Teresa, I'm going back now uh, to my technical uh, community roots and also for my academic roots because I precisely studied uh, some of those aspects about the internet uh, and uh, the, the sovereignty principle, for example. But just to be uh, very short in my answer to say that um, recalling Vinserv, they named the internet as internet working for uh, as of internet working uh, TCP IP protocol. So uh, recalling if you don't have the network connecting to the networks, and if you don't have the network of networks, this is not the internet, this is something else. So even if you want to create something, you might not call another internet or an alternative to the internet. This is something uh, else. And it's very risky because it was built as a network of networks for a reason, because it was needed to have this interoperability. Uh, it is needed to have this uh, uh, pipes free or dump, uh, uh, dump middle. There are some names <laughs> from the technical community for that. Uh, but it is built to be resilient. It is built to be uh, what we know uh, of the internet today for a reason. Uh, and if we start putting uh, those barriers, if we start putting those walls around the internet, we are going uh, to, uh, at a minimum, break it or uh, 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 kill it. <laughs> which would be even worse. So uh, I would be very, very careful with uh, those uh, alternatives. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your words of caution, uh, Raquel. Uh, Madame Kane, would you like to very briefly uh, react to this particular question? Uh, oui, merci. Ma réaction à cette uh, question, ce serait de dire qu'aujourd'hui, effectivement, s'il y a des initiatives très privées pour faire ce genre de réseau-là qui n'obéissent pas aux standards. Effectivement, il faut les, les, euh, essayer de faire toutes les initiatives possibles pour les bloquer ou les ralentir. Mais ce que je dirais, c'est que l'Internet a quelque chose de, de, de très, euh, euh, comment dire, de, qui, qui, qui contribue un peu à, à alimenter l'espoir euh, des, des populations sur la possibilité euh, d'avoir tous accès à une information qui est la plus généralisée possible. Et le fait d'avoir ce contenu-là, qui est un contenu de, de valeur qui permet à toutes les populations d'avoir accès à l'information, au divertissement, euh, à l'éducation, etc., ça fera qu'ils seront de toute façon obligés d'avoir euh, d'aller chercher le contenu qui, lui, est autorisé par les standards. Donc, le, le, je pense que le, le meilleur moyen de lutter contre ces réseaux privés-là, c'est de continuer à avoir des standards forts, des organismes forts qui permettent de promouvoir l'accès à une information qui soit utile à tous pour que les gens puissent aller chercher et recourir à cette information-là plutôt que de, de, de se retourner vers les réseaux privés qui ne sont pas assez ouverts. Voilà. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, Mr. Ida, you kind of referred to it uh, in your remarks earlier. Is there anything else that you would very briefly like to bring up now? on this particular question? Uh, sorry, I, I uh, couldn't uh, hear, but uh, uh, maybe uh, just briefly uh, uh, from myself. Uh, uh, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, finance is important, technology is important, regulation is important, everything is important. But uh, for me personally, uh, in the end, uh, the most important thing is uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, passion and the will to protect uh, this uh, open, uh, free, and uh, uh, interoperable internet, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, we have to uh, work uh, together uh, in the multi-stakeholder uh, participation and the uh, bottom-up uh, 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 efforts. Uh, is uh, most important, and uh, the, uh, from that point of view, uh, uh, the uh, uh, IGF is the place uh, to 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 materialize uh, these wills of the people, and uh, uh, we uh, need uh, to keep uh, this uh, momentum and the passion uh, uh, 
uh, of uh, all the different uh, people from different communities around the world uh, to to integrate uh, them uh, into uh, the power of uh, uh, maintaining and uh, promoting uh, this uh, democratic, uh, free, open internet. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Laura, very quickly to you. And while you're doing it, I will share one more Menti question uh, and we will try to do both things at once. So what has been going on in the chat, please? Hello, Teresa. Thank you very much. So in the chat, we are having a few very interesting discussions. And also we are having some resources that have been shared by some of our participants. So thank you very much for that because the links are very, very enriching. So the, one of the discussion is about optics versus results. We were talking about how sometimes governments have these, uh, these very proactive policies, but then the discussion was until which point they are materializing. So this was one of the discussion. And then the other was more of a proposition and it was, saying that uh, to address the lack of infrastructure for meaningful access, there are two key points. Uh, one of them, it was uh, to opt for national regulation. They were arguing that that was important. And the second idea was that it is important to collaborate with the centralized community projects. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, I apologize that we will not have time uh, to go through uh, these inputs and questions, but we certainly thank you for that. Uh, if you want to uh, give us some ideas for call of action on what are some of the concrete steps we can take, go to menti.com uh, again and use the code 7838-8509. You can do it also after uh, this session. Uh, to give us some guidance because inputs from this session will be uh, considered definitely by the uh, European Commission uh, in their uh, efforts. So with this, I am sorry that I will need to finish this session because we are out of time. I would like to thank uh, our audience um, that has joined us in Katowice. I would like to join our audience that has joined us online. Of course, all of our speakers, uh, a special uh, thank you to Mr. Ida because it is very late uh, in Japan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, travel safe uh, if you're returning from the IGF in a few days uh, and we hope to see you soon. Feel free to uh, give your inputs on the Mente uh, as, we, uh, as we collect them later beyond this session. Have a very good rest of the day. Bye-bye.